So I'm not going to lie to you all and pretend like I'm some kind of a uh, Yakuza mega fan, right? This was my first entry in the series because as a lot of you know, JRPGs are and probably always will be my favorite genre of video games. There's a few that come close, but JRPGs are by far my favorite genre. And the thing is, is I was not expecting to ever play a Yakuza game because like as many of you know, Yakuza games were never JRPGs. They were always actually beat-em-ups, which is a genre I don't really get into personally. Nothing against anyone who does enjoy beat-em-ups. I mean, that's totally acceptable. You play whatever you want to play, but I'm saying for me personally, I've never been a fan of games like that, right? And so I never really was going to go near a Yakuza game. I had heard they were great. You know, I'd heard of these type of games. Like, I'm not going to pretend like I didn't know what it was until it turned into a JRPG. But when it turned into a JRPG, I got really, really excited. Because, you know, I love JRPGs, like I said. And this was a turn-based JRPG, which seemed to be a dying breed these days. I mean, we get a couple every year. But honestly, they're not very plentiful. Whereas action JRPGs seem to be taking over the market. And action RPGs as a whole. Turn-based seem to be kind of dying out. They're kind of a dying breed. So... I was very, very, very excited to try out this turn-based JRPG, and I have to say, my expectations were absolutely blown out of the water. Allow me to welcome you to the world of Yakuza Like a Dragon. So Yakuza Like a Dragon is one of those games that you don't really expect to actually blow you away the way it blew me away. Like it was definitely one of those games I went into, I looked at the cover art, I looked at everything about it and it definitely looked to me like just a fun time. Nothing in particular that was going to stand out to me as like a really really great game or anything, just looked like something to help the time pass by, you know what I'm saying? Another video game just to review for you guys to see if it ended up being good. I didn't expect it to be one of my favorite JRPGs on the PlayStation 5 and of this new console generation, actually. So, um, the thing is, is this game, I should preface it by saying it is a turn-based JRPG, but it does also have live action elements involved. Like, sometimes you gotta spam uh, certain buttons in order to get the maximum power of an attack, which is something I think I need to note, because for all of you vanilla JRPG players such as myself, this is not your one-to-one -one JRPG. It definitely has elements of um, other things in it, but that's fine. You know, I like evolution. I like change. I like something that doesn't just try to be a copy of everything else. You know, I think it gives it some identity by mixing some of these things together, and I really appreciate that about it, but I feel like I should say it for those of you that are purists, and you might not be very interested in this. If you're a turn-based purist, you just play Final Fantasy VII, the original, you would never go towards the remake. If you're a person like that, maybe this isn't for you because it does pull from other things besides just turn-based, but at its core, it is a turn-based JRPG, and that's, I wanted to preface the video before I got any further. Now, I know what you all are probably wondering. Yeah, it's great, it's turn-based, it's this, is that, but is the combat actually fun? And yes, but one thing, right? The AI sometimes is literally broken, and I wish I was joking, but no. The AI is literally broken sometimes. Like, sometimes it's so broken that you'll be playing the game, and it will literally just, like, tweak out. And, like, you'll be like, what happened? You'll wait 30 seconds, everything will just go back to normal. I don't know if this is a problem on every platform. Like I said earlier, I did play it on PlayStation 5. It is on other platforms as well. It's pretty much everywhere but Switch. So um, I don't know if that's necessarily something that is just plaguing the PlayStation version. I really highly doubt it. It's probably a problem with everything that needed to be patched but no one bothered doing. Definitely not game-breaking. Just something that definitely is a little off-putting because you'll be in the middle of a battle or something. And sometimes the characters will just do stupid things or the whole game will just kind of stand still and just play the music and all the characters are moving like they're ready to fight but you already put it in action but nothing actually happened that happened to me quite a few times i'd say probably about five to ten times during my playthrough 
Besides that, performance runs pretty, pretty well. There's a couple uh, gun attacks that will absolutely drop the frame rate, but nothing here game breaking, nothing here that's going to hold you back. At the end of the day, it is a turn-based game, so, you know, precision is not really something necessary. You more have to think on the strategic side and make your moves wisely so that you can take down your enemy. It's not really about how quickly you can press the button or how quickly you can go somewhere behind the enemy and attack them. You know, it's not really based on precision. It's more based on you know, using your mind to kind of figure out exactly what direction you want to take the battle to lead yourself to success. And that's one of the things that I think you know, is a common trend among all turn-based games. Overall, the frame rate is less than a problem, and honestly, I would not worry about it. I've not heard about it being bad on any other platform either, like, so I think it's pretty good overall. If you want, like, a completely thorough analysis of the performance, I do recommend Digital Foundry. They put out a video on Yakuza Like a Dragon. I recommend checking it out if you are considering buying this game and you are hesitant to see if it will run well on your platform. I'm just telling you my experiences with the game. That does not mean that you will have the same experience. That's just exactly kind of how it went for me. Now, when it comes to characters and stuff like that, I really felt like the cast was very strong. I was legitimately shocked how strong I felt like the cast actually was. Now, the characters, they're not like the best cast of all time or anything, but I feel like for what they are, it works really well, and I think by the end of the game, you will end up really, really caring about these characters. The cast of the game definitely surpassed my expectation, but with that being said, there is numerous other video games I could think of off the top of my head that have better casts, but don't let that deter you from playing the game because the cast is great. It's just not, in my opinion, among the best video gaming has to offer, and I feel that it falls flat in a couple areas, like especially with Namba. I feel like his character arc is just really, really bad, personally. I think you're going to be, you know, remembering this game and thinking about this game a lot because it really does bring a lot of incredibly powerful ideas to the table and really, really sad ideas to the table as well. And I just personally think that that's worth noting. We talked a little bit about performance, but we did not talk about visuals. This game looks absolutely fantastic. Running on a PlayStation 5 in uh, the graphics fidelity mode because of the fact that I don't really need the high frame rates for a game like this, like I said because you're not going to need that precision. And honestly, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'd highly recommend running it in the 30 FPS mode because you do not really need the 60. You really don't. And I feel like it's honestly not worth the trade-off, in my opinion. The visuals, they drop a lot, significantly, on PlayStation 5. And I do not think it's worth the trade-off. I think that you should go for the fidelity mode. And I think that the game overall will look a lot better. And you will just get a better experience because the game truly is beautiful. And as you've heard this entire video, the music is absolutely fantastic. It's like techno mixed with hard rock, sometimes even approaching metal with some of the snares and rhythm guitar um, sequences. I think it sounds fantastic. Um, mostly techno, mostly video gamey sounding music, but sometimes when it does bridge over into that hard rock, that metal style, those crushing sounds, um, I think it's absolutely great. Soundtrack's very heavy overall, and I think that it truly hypes you up while you're playing the battles. And, you know, when you're in the middle of a battle, you need something to hype you up. And I feel like that's where JRPGs like Tales of Arise kind of fall in that category. I feel like some of the music just doesn't really hype you up to play. It really doesn't. This game absolutely excels in that respect. And I'm happy to report that the soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal. And I listen to it a lot. There's only a handful of video game soundtracks that I really listen to. So that's definitely... Very, very respectable coming from me. I don't really listen to a lot of video game soundtracks, but this is definitely one that I do listen to. Anyways, the next thing I want to talk about is the game overall. Let's just overall, you know, talk about it. The dungeons are great. Characters are great. Story's pretty good, but it dips seriously in the middle. Um, music's great. Runs great for the most part. Um, there's not really much bad I can say. There really is not much bad I can say. Like I've already mentioned numerous times in this video, the story is absolutely the biggest problem with this game in my opinion, just because of the fact that it sets the stakes so high and it finishes on such a high note. I mean, the end of the game had me ready to cry. I'm not going to even lie to you all. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you all. I mean, when they rolled those credits, I was like, I was holding back to tears. It was truly a really, really sad ending, and I have to say, it was definitely an ending that definitely caught me off guard. I feel like I just keep saying definitely. Take a shot every time I say definitely. <laughs> I was genuinely shocked, and I'm happy to report that the game overall, I think, is more than worth playing, and if you are considering buying it, I definitely think it's worth it. I played it nearly two years after its release. I got it on a sale for $20, and it was one of the better $20 games I've ever bought. 
if we're talking about all the games as a whole I've ever bought on sales. If you can get this game on a sale like I did on Black Friday, it's sat in my backlog for a long time now. It's now almost March. I just got around playing it. A couple weeks ago, I beat it. The game took me about 51 hours to beat. If you can get this thing on a sale, it's 100% worth it. If you have to pay full price or close to it, I'd still say it's worth it. And honestly, overall, it's a great game. For sure getting a recommendation from me, I'd highly recommend it. And I seriously think it's one everybody needs to try, especially JRPG fans. I'm very, very, very excited for the next Yakuza game as it has been confirmed to be turn-based as well. If they keep going in this direction, they could make absolutely stellar JRPG. I think for their first time trying out the JRPG genre, they did a really, really good job. The entire game feels like a love letter to JRPGs with a ton of Dragon Quest, Pokemon, and a bunch of other JRPG references made throughout the game. So that's kind of uh, my full review of the game from a non-spoilers point of view. Like I said, I think it's great. If I were you, I'd get it. Now, the rest of this video, I am going to um, get on with spoilers. So if you want to leave, that whole original half of the video was spoiler free. Um, so this part of the video is not going to be spoiler free. We're going to be talking about some of the plot logistics. I'm not going to spoil every single thing because obviously, why would I do that? But I am going to get into some of the nitty gritty and some of the details here. So let's get started with that. Now, the first thing I think we need to get right out in the open here is when you start the game and you are Ichiban as a teenager, I feel like that's where the game is at its best. And after Ichi gets shot and builds his way all the way back up to the ending, I feel like the game almost makes a V shape in a sense, right? So you have the beginning of the game on the left side of the V, you have the middle of the game and like everything at that part at the bottom. And then you have the ending of the game at the top because of the fact that I feel like the first part of the game and the last part of the game are definitely the best. The narrative sense of everything kind of falls off when he starts um, living at the homeless base and all that. I truly do feel like that puts a damper on the experience because we were used to all these really, really cool buildings and everything. And now we're just, you know, we're basically living in a trash can. So that's something that I think definitely is going to affect in my opinion, my perception of the game, I was used to all those beautiful dungeons and things, which we will get back to, but I'm saying the whole middle part of the game to me just felt like a lot of things that were unnecessary and a lot of things that, in my opinion, didn't really add that much. I have to say it was definitely the most least enjoyable part of the experience of Yakuza Like a Dragon and stood out like a sore thumb to me personally. Now, if you enjoyed the middle of the game, I'm really, really happy with you, but I feel like ever since Ichi gets shot, the game kind of goes downhill and it starts to come back up as soon as Arakawa starts to get back involved again in the stuff with the EGN3 towards that part of the game. If you play the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Towards that area of the game, stuff really, really gets going again, especially with Ryo Aoki and all that. gets very, very interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed the beginning part where we were, you know, taking the young master where he had to go and stuff like that. That was just really, really fun. There were parties. Like, that's what I'm saying. It goes from this lavish lifestyle to literally living by trash cans. I don't really care, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like it's just more boring. Like, the beginning of the game's, like, really, really hype and, like, you're rich and everything's going great and you're Yakuza and that means something at that point. And when he gets out of jail all those years later... It's just, it's not the same until all the way to the end, in my opinion. And that's why I hesitate to say this game is written brilliantly, because I can't say that. The whole middle of the game, I did not think was as good as the beginning and the end. If the game was the beginning, middle, and end all exactly equal, amazing, this would be literally one of the best JRPGs I ever played. But because of the fact that it falls off so hard, and comes back though, it does come back, but it falls off so hard, it's hard for me to sit here and say that narratively it is a genius writing, because I don't think that it is. I think that maybe the next Yakuza game could be, especially because now we have it confirmed it will be turn-based and everything like that. I seriously did enjoy a lot of moments throughout the story. I definitely think that even though the middle part wasn't as good, there was a little bit of enjoyableness through it. I mean, I'm not going to act like I cared that much. But there was a couple things that happened that were interesting. I mean, it was just, I gotta be honest with you, it just was not that great of a part of the game. And I feel like it was kind of a drag at certain points. It really was. And it was kind of like, oh, here we go again, you know. We're out, we're, we're collecting cans. Like, I just didn't want to do all that stuff. I think this game does its best when it's trying to be crazy, when we're battling tigers in, uh 
fancy, fancy places. And when we're out and we're battling literal machinery with people in it, uh, like those are the fun times. There's a lot of funny jokes. There's some moments that are really, really good. You should definitely try this game. You should definitely try it. And I don't know how much of the game is ruined by that middle part, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of it for me personally. It really did put a complete and utter damper on the experience, but overall, the game really was worth playing, and I'm definitely going to replay it at some point. Actually, I enjoyed it so much that I think I'm going to venture out into beat-em-ups and play, like, the first beat-em-up I've played in, like, literally eight years. I think I'm going to start with Yakuza 0, and I'm going to build my way all the way up to Like a Dragon before Like a Dragon 2 comes out, or whatever they end up naming it, because it's confirmed that Ichiban will be returning as the protagonist, so I'm just assuming it may be tied to the whole Like a Dragon thing. I definitely think this one is worth it. And if I were you, I'd check it out. This has been my review of Yakuza Like a Dragon. Let me know down in the comments section below. Have you played this game? Was it good? Did you enjoy it? You hardcore Yakuza fans, let me know. Do you like the change in combat? Do you hate the change in combat? Are you mad that they ruined your beloved beat-em-up series? Are you mad about that? I could see that affecting certain people. Like me personally, I don't like beat-em-ups. But if I loved beat-em-ups, this is the other way around, and the Yakuza series was a JRPG turn-based game for all these years since, like, the PlayStation 2 era, and then all of a sudden it turns into a beat-em-ups game i had been very, very, very disappointed, and I think that that's something that, you know, not a lot of people are talking about, that what about the original fans of this series? How are they going to handle the fact that the combat system was completely changed? You know, that's definitely got to bother some people, and I can't blame people if they are mad about that. Anyways, that's all I have to say in this video. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to drop me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching. Jimmy out of here.